This is the truth about Caspa. We're about to reveal some crazy facts about Caspa that you don't know about. Welcome to the Bean Pod. This is your place for all things stocks and crypto. From beginner tips to expert picks, use this as fuel for your investing journey. Because when you're in the know, your money will grow. This episode of the Beam Pod is sponsored by BitGet. BitGet is the most user-friendly and secure crypto trading platform for both beginners and experienced traders. BitGet is the best place to not only trade Bitcoin and Ethereum, but also all the small cap gems that we discuss every day. With 24 seven customer support, leverage trading, and a wide array of other advanced features, BitGet sets itself apart from every other centralized exchange. Through Beanstalk's official partnership with BitGet, you'll receive 15% off all trading fees when you sign up using the referral link in the description. All views expressed by speakers on the BeamPod are solely their opinions. You should not treat any opinion expressed on the BeamPod as a specific inducement to make a particular investment or follow a specific strategy, but only as an expression of their opinion. This podcast is for informational purposes only. Welcome to the Bean Pod. This is Shane, aka the Jolly Green Investor. And this is Josh, the Nifty Investor. Today, we're going to be revealing the truth about Caspa. Caspa is one of the best performing assets in all of crypto. That thing is up only. If any of you are holding it, congrats, because it should be paying off fucking tremendously right now. Yep. But let's dive in. Like, is Caspa worth holding? Is Casper worth buying now if you've missed its parabolic run? Or is now a time to be selling? Mm. What makes this project so unique? Why has it been up only since inception? 100%. So there's a few things that we should focus on right away. Okay, we need to put our hands up. You know, we missed the, the initial Casper run. Fair enough, as, as you said, like fair play to everyone that's been in it. But there's a few things that have really set Casper apart from the rest of the market. And that's why I think it's been, it's been such a successful coin. Things like the community. Things like the decentralization, the tokenomics, the mining, right? They've done a lot of things right that we're going to detail in this episode. So it's important to listen to this episode because what you're going to learn is what Casper did right. And then you can think about what other coins are, mm. are employing the same roadmap. So you can potentially find the next Casper. And we can even discuss that later in the episode. So make sure you tune to the end. And if you are a dev or a project that is watching this episode, mirror what Casper has done. Because it's so nice to see a project that isn't VC backed and is dumping tokens regularly on their holders. Yep. You know, this is that's why this project has done so well. So this claims to be the fastest open source decentralized, fully scalable layer one in the world. Is it true? Well, they use something known as block dag. And I think we could dive a little bit more into the technology about what makes that so unique. Um, so from their website, it says the world's first block dag. So this is a digital ledger that enables parallel blocks and instant transaction confirmation. It's built on a robust proof of work engine with rapid single second block intervals. So this block DAG is like an evolution in the blockchain world. It's a lot different. What makes it so different is where multiple blocks can be created and confirmed simultaneously. Whereas on a traditional ledger, if you will, it's block confirmed, block confirmed. Now it can take all the like all the information at once and simultaneously confirm all of them. So that's what allows it for it to be with like a really strong throughput. Yeah. It's really interesting what Casper has done because a lot of projects come along and say, we're the next Bitcoin. We're the new version of Bitcoin. We've improved upon Bitcoin's technology. And really like, it seems like Casper is one of the closest, if not the closest to actually doing it because they've followed the whole ethos of Bitcoin, which is decentralization, right? So there's no like one central govern governance. There's no, founder and team with a bunch of tokens, all that kind of stuff. So it is fully decentralized. It's completely open source, which is again, following in the ethos of Bitcoin. But one of the main, you know, points against Bitcoin is that it's too slow. It's old school. It can never be used as a, a settlement for transactions for payments because it needs the lightning network. Well, that's where Caspa is coming with this block tech technology and said, look, we're, we're keeping all the good parts of Bitcoin, but we're making it much faster, much easier to actually build payment rails on. So maybe it is like the second coming of Bitcoin, and maybe that is why it's performed so well. However, it still has a very comparatively low market cap to Bitcoin and many other like tier one altcoins. Yeah, Bitcoin has never really taken off as a peer-to-peer -peer transfer network. It seems to have adopted the narrative of a digital gold. You know, it's e-gold, if you will. 
Casper can almost be viewed as like the silver to Bitcoin's gold. And it's interesting to see that the, the name, it came from an aematic uh, word um, for silver and money. So it's, that's what Casper means in aematic. Right. So it's really interesting that they've designed it. Like, look, when, when you're using silver, typically it's traded more, it's used more, it's like a different form. Whereas with gold, people tend to just hold on to that. Mm, right so that's what casper's trying to do the silver to bitcoin's gold yeah and then you know going back to things that we look for in projects a lot more now than we did you know maybe when we were a little bit newer in crypto is things some things that casper has done so it was a fair launch project right that means that it's not going to be under scrutiny from the sec same thing as bitcoin uh that means like organic price growth uh, price growth protection from all these regulations that are coming in which you know in this kind of day and age of significant regulation coming into crypto that's a good thing and then you look at the community like the casper community hats off to them hats off to you if you're watching they are so strong there's so many people on x on youtube talking about casper that it's almost like the community has driven this growth there were a lot of rumors i remember in casper's earlier days that you know a lot of bitcoin ogs were behind casper a lot of these you know decentralized fully anonymous guys that you know don't know who they are but if you look at their wallets you know, they're, they're in Caspa, and these are the same guys discussing Caspa that were discussing Bitcoin in 2010 or 2011, mm. 2012, 2013, right? And that's really interesting because, you know, again, when we look at Caspa, what's it? It's ranked in the top 20 or something like that. It's got a several billion dollar market cap. But you look at the, the ecosystem in terms of the number of dApps and, you know, things that you can actually do on Caspa, there's not that much, right? So it speaks to the community and the holders that they've held this long, and no one is dumping their bags. You can see it in the chart. Despite the fact that you can't, you know, there's no meme coin trading, there's no games or metaverse, or there's not a lot of stuff in the actual ecosystem yet, but people are not selling their coins. And that speaks to the community. It's good because it's not spoofed activity, if you will. Mm -hmm. You know, like if you look at Solana, and I hate that chain, <laughs> <laughs> and I'll, I'll always be verbal about that, but like it's just filled with celebrity coins, it's filled with meme coins. The only real project on Solana to me is like Block Asset, right? <laughs> the block token. Like you have a casino at $10 million that is going to be generating millions of dollars. But to that point, like there isn't all this spoof activity occurring on the Casper network, which is why like it's true market value is what it is. Right. Right. It's not jacked up by all these meme coins. So yeah, 230,000 holders. It seems as though they see like, look, there's nothing pre-mined. They started in 2021. There's 24 billion currently in circulation with a max supply of 28 billion. So most of the tokens are already coming out. Yep. And like Bitcoin, it also follows um, an emission schedule. But the way they've done it is it halves once per year. Yeah, interesting. So it's a lot. It's a lot. It's like a, a smoother transition versus right. like these huge like ups and downs that we get Bitcoin. Yep. It's almost like it's condensed what Bitcoin will and continue to do into the future. Yep. Because of the emission schedule. Yeah, because it's a relatively newer coin, you know, compared to Bitcoin, obviously, and already 85% of tokens in circulation. As at time of recording for the research I was doing, it was saying that it Caspa, the coin, is the most profitable coin for mining for GPU miners right now. That's really interesting, right? So it's driving miners into the ecosystem in the community. It's driving developers there because it's very profitable to get in right now. You know, at these high prices, that makes sense because the, t the token has performed so well. So there's, two th there's actually a few things that, that really caught my eye about this project, and it is the mining. So one thing, it's been designed to be ASIC resistant, ASIC resistant. That means it's more accessible to a broader range of miners. Like it's not just for one typical miner. So everybody can kind of participate in mining this. Recently, Marathon Digital, one of the biggest Bitcoin holders in the uh, miners in the world, they started mining Casper. So they've mined uh, 93 million Cas, uh, Casper, equivalent to 15 million as of June 25th, 2024. So they're jumping in. I find that really interesting because <coughs> this might be, be a little bit complicated, but to me, the mining makes so much sense. Like I've been following this a little bit more when it comes to the Bitcoin side of things to see what are the miners doing if they're selling probably a good time to not be buying Bitcoin, but right. waiting until that hash rate picks back up. Yep. All right, so in traditional cr cryptocurrencies, slow block rate also indicates high variances of mining income. What this essentially means is as it becomes more difficult to mine any other cryptocurrency, typically you have to join a large pool because you're not gonna really re like receive any real rewards. It's just not worth it. So you end up joining these big pools for mining, but then, as more and more newcomers come on, it becomes more centralized. Right. So you might have this giant pool, but there's you know a bunch of people in it, but then there's only like four giant pools. Whereas at the beginning, there might've been 20, yep. but it becomes more difficult. 
With Casper, what they've done is they've redu- reduced the variance in mining rewards, so it discourages mining centralization. So it promotes more people to jump in, and it actually creates a, a more decentralized... Pro- yeah. Versus, like, if you look at Bitcoin, it's like Marathon, uh, Riot, yep. all these guys. It's the big players who are actually able to mine it. Right. Not everybody can. That's why you see that minor capitulation. You're not seeing that with Casper. Yeah, it's really interesting, and... That speaks to the decentralization, how they've kind of built off of what Bitcoin kind of brought to the crypto, brought to, you know, blockchain space, financial markets, all that kind of stuff. And I think one thing that really bodes well for the future of Caspa, well, there's, there's multiple things which we'll get through. But one thing is, you know, earlier I said, well, maybe it's a bit of a red flag that there's no, you know, ecosystem full of dApps and DeFi and games and memes and all that stuff. But I think what the, when you dive into the Caspa community, which I have, is they're really, they really have their eyes on a very simple use case, which is actually becoming like, what Bitcoin want it to be, which is mm. which is digital cash. True. And because it's faster and more scalable with faster block times, but has that same security, a lot of people in the community thinks that, you know, this Casper really does have the opportunity to to f- succeed where Bitcoin failed, and that is becoming a digital payments network because it's fast, cheap, and scalable, right? And then when you look forward into, you know, what are some potential large catalysts that could continue to propel the price of the KAS token higher? Well, you don't have to look much further than the fact that it's not on Binance yet. Mm. It's not on Kraken yet, right? So it's, there's a lot of tier one exchanges that haven't listed Caspa, despite the fact that it's performed so well, despite the fact that it's in the top 25 for crypto coins, mm. and despite the fact that it has massive volume and a ton of very loud community members. So if you're looking for something that can boost the price even higher, you know, when Binance, when Kraken, right? That could legitimately happen at some point in 2024 or early 2025. So if you're looking for bullish catalysts for Caspa, there they are. It also highlights the fact that like you don't need a tier mm-hmm. one exchange. Look at look at what Caspa has done. Look at what BitTensor did before uh, a few of their listings. It was up only. You know, when it when uh, a product does hit Binance, typically that's because the venture capitalists, the insiders, et cetera, have paid a large amount of money in the native token yep. to get listed. Mm-hmm. Then these centralized exchanges just end up dumping the token. Well, that's it. Those people that have those huge bags, they're like we need massive volume to dump our bags. So they take their money, they pay Binance to list it. The volume goes up because all these traders and they dump their bags on retail. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it can be a bullish catalyst. I feel like the rumor of it the happening. The rumor would be. Then when it happens, it usually marks a local top for all coins. So be, keep, be careful of that as well. It is interesting to see that Casper has never been hacked. You know, look at all the different projects out there. It seems like there's a hack every day, every single week. It's like, look, is this, is this the future of finance, or is this like the, or is this fucking back in the Stone Age or something? Why is there a hack every week, man? Yeah. It's like it's ridiculous. Thank you, Casper. They haven't been hacked. Yep. Um, I try to look for partnerships. They don't really have any. That's they, the thing. They have one little part. They have a partnership with Flux, so it's like a leading uh, provider of decentralized cloud solutions. Mm-hmm. This collaboration is actually pretty important. It's going to allow Caspa to deploy its network nodes on Flux decentralized cloud infrastructure, which includes 13,500 nodes globally. This partnership will enhance the decentralization, security, and scalability of the Caspa network. So, a good luck. Another 13,000 nodes being activated globally. You know, it's it's truly is decentralized. Yeah, 100%. And, you know, if you're looking at the Caspa chart, you're going to say, oh, you know, you guys are buying the top. You know, you're selling, trying to dump our bags. This thing is up already. But... You know, you look at it. So the fair launch of Casper was in November of 2021. At the start of 2023, the start of last year, it was 0.004 cents. Right now, it's sitting at 16 cents. So this thing is done like a 50 to 100x, depending on when you got in, when you got out. It's obviously performed extremely well. Is now the time to buy or sell? You know, that's obviously up to you. You're probably not going to get another 100x out of Casper. You know, it's not like a small cap, mid cap, which is quote unquote undiscovered. But you can't ignore its strength. You can't ignore the community or the technology. And there are still bullish catalysts there coming up for Caspa. So I don't own any Caspa right now, but it's one that I'm going to be continuing to watch. I missed out on the initial 50 to 100x from when it was undiscovered to now. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be buying right now, but it's firmly on my watch list. I really do understand the power of Caspa. It's one of the most impressive projects, and you can't deny how strong it's been, right? So, you know, it's, it's, it's a good-looking project. Never been hacked. If they do end up becoming a peer-to-peer transfer network and it actually does get utilized by the masses, you know, that valuation, of which is currently sits at $4 billion, could go a lot higher. The mining rewards are there. You have big players, like I said, like Marathon Digital hopping in there, mining Caspa. You have the limitations that allow everybody to, to mine it, so the rewards are there. It's pretty good. I mean, the, the founder, was it Yonatan 
Sompolinsky. He's mentioned in the Ethereum in the Ethereum like uh, papers and all right. that. So like he's a prominent figure in the blockchain space as well. Yeah, their team and a lot of the developers I think are quite highly regarded figures in the crypto space. So there's a lot of smart people in this project that have obviously been in from the start. There's a lot of really interesting developers. Things are being built, and you look at you know what's kind of been happening for this crypto bull run. The top projects are attracting a lot of interest from institutions because they can't really buy all these random coins, right? So you see Caspa. Four billion dollar market cap. But well, when you compare it to previous bull runs, you've actually seen projects that have a lot less going on reach much higher market caps than four billion, right? Like Cardano got to like fifty billion dollars last bull run. So, could you see another five to ten x at a Caspa? Probably. Yeah, you probably could. Like long term, if you're looking, you know, yeah. next five to ten years, for yeah, sure. for sure. Yeah, I mean, over the next few years, if things go crazy, like a lot of people think they could, then you could see another five to ten x at a Caspa. So. For me, I'm not going to recommend a buy or a sell right now. I'm going to say, look, it's firmly on my watch list. Congratulations to anyone that's been in from the start. I know they have a really rabid community. And like, if there's anything that we missed about Caspa, I'm sure there is. Let us know in the comments because, as we said, we, we like this project. We're going to keep it on our watch list. And we'll keep you guys up to date with anything that has to do with Caspa. I'd also like to see other projects follow a similar principle. Mm. So if anybody out there who is already like scoping out gems and stuff, like let us know in the comments if you see anything up and coming. You know, projects that are actually following the same principle, let us know. We'll, we'll check it out. Maybe do a deep dive as well. So, For sure. Hey, make sure you guys tune into the next episode. That one is going to be a banger. All views expressed by speakers on the Beanpod are solely their opinions. You should not treat any opinion expressed on the Beanpod as a specific inducement to make a particular investment or follow a specific strategy, but only as an expression of their opinion. This podcast is for informational purposes only.